Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Peace and love, everybody. I hope that everyone, everyone within my voice that is with this is getting this in such a way that we are able to rock it well, well, well. Hey, now. Um, all the grams, all the fangs, all the fangs. This is in Pukamut. Hem the chair, the Shemsu Amin Ra. Hem Sashini Hitch Tanub Kara Unet Amin Ra. I'm in Pukamut, priest, follower of the Temple of the White and Gold Lotus Shrine of Amin Ra. Ah, give me in here, give me in. And so, Today, we're going to pick up where we left off last time. And where we left off last time was we were directly talking about you need more than one mode of wellness to stay healthy. This is a different time. And calling for a different time, we need to respond differently. So if this is your first time checking out the live, it's going live both on Instagram and in the Facebook community. So I'm grateful if you are a part of the Kemetic Ahan Sama Association, then you know that we're also putting this live in our Facebook group for archiving purposes. Later on this evening and into next week, you'll be able to find it on our YouTube channel. If you do have a chance, please check it out. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We will be most grateful. If you get an opportunity to support us, please do. These efforts don't come without a great amount of work, support, and assistance. So if you get an opportunity to check out us out at our PayPal, you know, please do so. Give us some love. We greatly appreciate it. We're sharing this information along with the tools of Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong, yoga, and meditation for the community specifically to address the issues that come about due to the voluntary shelter in place that we've all been under since March, which is to address our physical health, our mental, emotional, and spiritual well being. The tools that we are sharing and providing provide you an opportunity to take an active role in maintaining your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual health. And so we have a series, and this series that we're doing, and we're keeping it in the IGTV for this account is called uh, Liberation Tools. And one of the things that we're doing here is we're gonna be expanding as we head into fall and head into winter. We start this, this particular chat off with a brief summary of what we've done thus far. And then once we get to what we've done thus far, we get into a little bit of today and hopefully on Instagram side, we'll dive into some live questions with you all if y'all happen to have some questions. So specifically, the previous section, the previous nine liberation tools sections that we covered, we wanted to look at the human body and to really explore the fullness of the human body from looking at it from not just a Western allopathic perspective, but we looked at it in terms of the perspective of the Kamites, who were uh, the people of Kemet, the Kemet Nu, who were among the first to understand the human body and to understand it and gave birth to both the spiritual understanding and the allopathic understanding. So that you have, so there is this merger that we have worked to maintain and then there was a split as the information passed down. So with that, what through the training that I got specifically training in not just Kemet, but also in the Buddhist and Taoist traditions in some of the yogic traditions, specifically Hatha, Pranayama, Kundalini yogas, what we have been able to produce in the Kemetic Ahan Sama Association is a unique way of keeping the body healthy and maintaining it. So we spent the early sessions going through what the body looks like. We explored the general concept of chakras or chakras, the general concept of meridians, meridian theory, traditional Chinese medicine, and then looking at the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles, the viscera, the joints, from the perspective of self-defense science, martial science, in addition to the subtle energy bodies looked at from Kemet, 
which also means that we looked at it from the aspect of the ka, the kat, the kaibit, all these fun terms that define subtler aspects of the body. And then we also looked at not just the chakras, not just the meridians, but what we have in our Tai Chi Chuan system, which is called the psychic channels, which are an additional set which come out of the Taoist healing tools, out of Taoist yoga. So fortunately for us, we have an opportunity to be able to share with you these different meditation techniques, these different perspectives on how to utilize the body. And that brings us to last week's session where we talked about Let's say you, you know, you're know you vegan and because you're vegan, you eat right and you get the right amount of sun and the right amount of water. And then somehow you get into a place where you don't have access to good water. And you don't have access to the same kind of vegan food that you have. What do you do to maintain your health? You see here frequently where we are now, many of us have had to address that either through food insecurity issues, or what we like to call, you know, responding to this cis heteropatriarchal settler colonial capitalist system. What ends up happening is that the ability for us to acquire the means to provide for our families can be subject to the whims of this system and the dominant narrative and the supporters of that dominant narrative that we've seen just in the election in the United States in this last week. So if that brought you some tension, if that brought you some discomfort, if that brought you some, some level of peace as well, or some level of joy at the outcome, these tools hopefully will aid you. So last session we covered why you'd wanna use some tools like Tai Chi Chuan, Qi Gong, meditation. And those are the basic tools that we offer in terms of Tai Chi Chuan. I didn't talk much about our, our meditation system, Rekati Kameti, our Kemetic Mind Science. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking about that today. So we're gonna talk about that and talk about some of the other healing methods that are out there from the Kemetic communities, some things that you may or may not know about, and some other ways of utilizing the information that is available to you so that you don't just have one way of looking at health, and that way would be either the Western way, which is, you know, well, I'm gonna get me a physical workout and that works the physical aspect of my body. And if I don't, if I'm not, you know, if I don't have a six pack and I don't have 5% body fat, I'm not healthy, regardless of the way that, what it is that I choose to eat. So we wanna explore what health and wellness really is, which is organ function, okay, optimal, organ function, which comes not just through the support of good food. And then we talked about this a bit earlier. We have another joint lecture with the Intersection for Mankind, one of our partners, where we're going to be talking about what it means to get into the soil, what it means to get into the ground, into the roots. Because as a Tai Chi Chuan practitioner, one of the primary things that I want to do is to uproot you is to disconnect you from the source of your root, your centeredness. Because then I can do all sorts of things to keep myself safe and offer you some options to change your behavior. So with that, let's, let's dive in. So we call it Rekhati Kemeti or Kemetic Mind Science. And primarily what that looks at is a particular tool that we use called Hekau or uh, we call it word sound power would probably be the best way to talk about it. Other way would be like a hesi or a chant. So these are things that move along the similarity with mantra, which I went over last time talking about what we consume. So, but I didn't re really get into, so the, the heshi is a, a, a hekau of the language that we use, we call it medu nature. Some first call it ndu ntur. You'll hear me utilize a particular variant of the expression outwardly of the language of the Medu Necher, which is how I say it, how I was taught through our temple system. I don't say it that way to engender or to create conflict with anyone else. Again, even if you just look at modern languages, you have Castilian Spanish, and then everywhere else they stop, those, those conquistadores when they got to different places, the expression of that Spanish shifted and changed. 
and they don't tell the other that they're not speaking Spanish. So we are able to work it out once we get the sound and the, the vowels and the way we pronounce the consonants, the way we move the tongue, the glottal stops. There are ways that we can work through to make sure that we're speaking the same language in the way that everybody gets. So if there's a challenge there or I say something that's a little uncomfortable and folks don't grasp, you know, hit me in the comments, hit me in here. If you drop a question in while we're here, I'd be glad to cover that question while we're on the Instagram live. So let's dive in. So we got Rekhati Committee. So what it is, is it's a way of training the mind through meditation, through physical movement, through sound, through music, through visualization, to prepare one to, first off, you're gonna balance the lobes of the brain, you're gonna balance out the organ systems, the organ functions, the glandular functions through the use of Tai Chi Chuan, Qi Gong, and the, med the basic meditations, and through what we call Kepler Necheru, or a transformation into the Necher. And I'm talking about it in that way so you understand it's not just the everyday person, the everyday lay person who gets into it and wants to get down like that. However, these are tools that the everyday lay person can utilize as a way to focus themselves, as a way to take advantage of the energy that is available to all of us. And that's what I want to be able to do. So we've gone over the bellows breathing before where you, as you breathe in, you push the stomach out, dealing with the lower abdomen. And as you breathe out, you pull the stomach in. So towards the end, if we have time today, we'll get into a, a very light, very easy, relaxing, peaceful meditation. Because we may even get into, I may devote a whole section that we do one of these Sundays to where we're just gonna get into different kinds of meditation for be it for healing be it for movement but we want to be able to get your body into a place where you can really really get it down talk about what we're talking about how we do it so you have some folks and you have our sisters that are doing great work out of the Raseki uh, temple and so they do something that they refer to as comedic reiki okay and so you can check them out and they do a wonderful work in terms of healing in terms of explaining it in multiple levels, dealing with that. And so that's one of the, we refer to uh, the type of energetic healing that we do. And I was taught through the Temple of the White Gold Lotus Shrine of Amun Ra, through my teachers. And what we do is it's called a Seneb Necher. And you may know the word Seneb from the phrase Ankh Uja, Seneb, life, health, and strength, or wellness. And so that's Seneb provides you with basically overall health. So it's a way of utilizing the net shed or utilizing the subtle energy bodies that exist within you and to then communicate with the subtle energy bodies of another person to then transfer the ambient energy of the earth from person to another person. So that can occur in the same location or it can occur over distance. So let's say you want to send it where someone is, or you wanna do it in a way that enables you to use the energy here in the same room, in the same location. So that particular energy is utilized as a way to not use your personal energy because it takes time to get folks to understand how to harness and not utilize the energy in their body. And that's one of the reasons why we teach Tai Chi Chuan, why we teach Qigong, why we teach yoga, so you can understand the difference between using the energy in your body, which is finite. Even as, even among, even though our women are, are gods and God is, black woman is God, you'll hear me, black woman is God, black woman is infinite. Even though those things exist and woman is infinite, there is a finite nature to existence on this planet using this physical body. So if you burn the resources of the physical body, that can create dis-ease or health or organ dysfunction. And so you want to be able to differentiate that. And that's where the purpose of Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong come in and being able to aid you in knowing how to use the energy in your body as opposed to the energy of the planet, the energy, the ambient energy and the energy of the planet 
to utilize in transferring energy between folks and healing. And then also calling on what we call the nature or the, the divine forces or the great energies that govern life on this planet as a way to maximize your health and healing. And so one of the ways that I'll talk about that is you've seen me or heard me talk about a movement that we refer to as opening the chest. Now, the system that we teach in terms of Qigong and the system of opening the chest was brought to us by one of our sister organizations from uh, Sister Nati out of a Doshi Healing Arts. And one of the things that you'll notice is that I frequently talk about our partnerships and our relationships specifically because I don't know everything. I'm here to learn, but I'm one, I'm one man, I'm one priest and I'm part of a network. And so being that I don't know everything, you will frequently hear me reference other priests, other references, other to tools, other partners that work with us to help to guide and aid people in their growth and development. So Doshi Healing Arts, amazing folk doing amazing work. Another person, if you're in, you know, on the, on the Pacific coast, you're up north, you hit up Doshi Healing Arts, if you're down south and you know, more towards Long Beach area, you hit up Professor Zahalia. Amazing, amazing. We talk about her a lot because she's the professor. So that's just our get down. She's available on, on Instagram too. You'll find her there. So we also talked about comedic Reiki. You've seen those folks. They're also on Instagram. I believe it's Rasaki. So you can find them as well. We have a lot of midwives that we support that we work with in terms of being able to do energetic work with the mothers who are expectant. We've done some Qigong in back in the day with some of the mothers. <laughs> yes, yes. And so Sister Nati is just getting that reminder to help folks remember these teachings are not, they're not mine. And so they're designed to be shared. They're meant to be shared. But also, just like you don't give everybody the keys to your car to drive, you got to know something about that person. You got to have some trust and some relationship. So you want to be able to understand that they're not going to mess your ride up. They're going to treat it well and do it to the best of their ability. So even though it's an open secret and even though it's accessible to everyone, it helps if you have a guide, it helps if you have a teacher, it helps if you can listen. It helps a whole lot more if you have good character. Okay. Cause that way I don't have to come, come see about you. And, you know, I will come see about you if you're not using anything I teach you appropriately. And that's where we get into this multimodal piece. So you understand many of my students uh, say this in, in all fun, because of the way in which we teach and we work together, when they're by themselves, they hear me. Hey, is your bottom tucked? Your shoulders relaxed? <laughs> Are your hands relaxed? All right, another piece is do it again. Again, are you relaxed? Is your bottom tucked? And I say those things to say that the people that we spend amazing time with, the people we trust, that we love, that we share our spirit with, we carry them inside us. So when we need them, they can manifest. And when we have that kind of trust, that's the multimodal piece that I talk about, that I'm talking about right now. Okay, so we went over the aspect of health and I've gone over, we, we're building and cultivating our awareness through the meditation techniques, through the practice of the self-defense arts. That allows us to hone and harden and shape our will. That affords us the opportunity to improve our awareness of what's happening, utilizing our senses, which includes our intuition, which is really just the ability to see and the ability to use our senses that we have beyond what is considered a normal human realm. Okay. And, you know, I could, you know, <laughs> and there's a lot of ways that I could go into that to talk about that. Many of you that have any real understanding of plant medicine have a great understanding for the studying of plant medicine knows that when you ingest specific types of plant medicines, what they do 
is they enhance your ability as a human. Colors can become sharper. Your perception of the range of colors that are visible to the eyes increases. These are studies that have been done. This is not in pool pulling this out as behind. You can check these out. And different plant medicines offer different things. Some can give you enhanced uh, strength, enhanced endurance. See some, and those are the things that people go, oh yeah, that, yeah, I can deal with that. I can deal with, you know, you know, I'll take some guarana and I can stay up or I'll take this and, and that everybody's comfortable with. But let's say I said something that said that, you know, I could take this particular plant medicine and it could expand your relationship to the electromagnetic spectrum that you, you know, what your eyes are able to see. So you'll accept it if it's endurance or if it's muscle strength, but if it's, it enhances your hearing, if it enhances your taste buds, if it enhances what you can see or what you can feel tactile, now you have some doubts, unless of course, you've taken a journey with one of these plant medicines. And so that's when I talk, now we're talking about multi modes. All right, because we want to understand that with the plant medicine is just that, it's a practice. Just like Tai Chi Chuan, just like Qigong, just like meditation. And we bring them together to aid in you having an optimal experience with your body, with your mind, so that we put it in a place where you have spirit, mind, body. And we get the understanding and through the training and practice that the brain is a part of the body. So the brain doesn't run the show. All right. So we've gone over what we call Rekhati Committee, very loosely talking about Senevna Chair, which is basically using a form of energy healing. And so that's another way that you can maintain your health. And if you check out, we went over this, you can go to our YouTube channel and check the descriptions. It was in the last week of October and we went over the aspects of the new moon, but we went over what we call the chi face massage, where you're basically using your body's healing energy to open up the nasal passages in the face, to relax the eyes, to what we call the overall body check-in, which is a qigong system that basically starts with the joints and the primary shoulder joints and the body looking at the neck and the back as a way to check in with your body. We went over it a few times in a variety of settings, including one of the liberation tools. So I'm not gonna belabor it here, but do understand you want to get to, particularly as the season is shifting and we're getting to a colder environment. And we understand that we're dealing with uh, an aerosol or an airborne based uh, pandemic. You wanna be able to keep the nasal passages cleared out and warm and in a healthy space. All right, so the chi face massage enables you to do that. We also have gone over, taught and partnered with uh, our folks over at Canacom Massage. You find them also here on Instagram where they're using the healing plant medicine of cannabis as well as CBD as a way to aid you and your body in terms of relaxation and in terms of using the aspect of healing physical touch massage to provide you with an opportunity to get in deeper touch and relax your body. And what we're going to do is during our part of our YouTube sessions, we're going to teach folks how to do a hand massage and how to do for yourself and how to do a foot massage for yourself and once you learn how to do it for yourself, you can do it for others. But I wanna be able to do that in such a way that you understand that it's a way for you to improve the intimacy in your relationship. It's a wonderful thing to do for your partner as a way of building intimacy. It's also a great way to stay close to your children as they age, okay? The tip, Sis Nati, thank you for coming, appreciate you. It's a way to help us understand the body, understand how you can have a relationship through the nerve endings in the body, how that connects to the other organs. And so there are ways that you can massage the hands that stimulate 
all the or major organ systems in the body, how you go through, right? And I've done this and we'll do it, not today, but I wanna just talk about in terms of multi-mode. So this is another way of getting at the organs internally. And you know, you wash your hands, dry your hands, which we're doing a lot of now, right? Right, right? A lot of hand washing is happening. So then you need to keep your hands moist to get you some shea butter. And while you're putting on that shea butter, and by the way, I use body butter, lady shea butter, body butter, lady shea butter. She's here on Instagram and she's also got a shop in Inglewood on Market Street. Best investment you have for your shea butter. But beyond that, and again, I'm not getting any money by talking about these folks. I use it because for me, it's the best that I've been able to find. I want to be able to share that with you so you understand that our ancestors searched for and went after the best products that they could get for themselves that provided the energetic work necessary. Now, shea butter, again, talking about plant medicines, one of those things that if you're African descended people or anybody, but primarily African descended people, it's one of those things that work very well. You don't need that, that, uh, See, that cocoa butter, that most of y'all get that ain't cocoa butter, it's actually petroleum jelly or petroleum oil or mineral oil, as they call it. That's not really great for the body. Shea butter is one of those things. Every area of the world where it was hot and you needed an oil to protect your skin has a natural oil that is available that will protect your skin. Avocado oil, grapeseed oil, almond oil, jojoba oil, always away. Now, we got the plant medicines that we discussed. We talked about massage. We've talked about the meditation system, uh, the, the hekau or the heshi. So let me get into that real quick. So what you do is you take a day, like generally utilizing the Western calendar and the general agreements between the Kemetic shrines, this would be the day of uh, Heru. Uh, Haru being uh, associated with that solar energy, which then became adapted in the West as Sun Day. And so I've gone over before in a piece on the cycles, where we talked about what are the different cycles and how that connects to the macrocosm and the microcosm, both in the human body as a reflection of the outer cosmos and how the practice of Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong, and yoga puts you in sync with the changing cycles on the planet. So I'm not gonna get into that. We've gone over that already, but I wanna reference that to say that in the Kemetic community, there are multiple calendars at work. There's one that allows us to more easily move with the Western calendar. So you'd have today, which would be connected to Haru, and then you'd have a moon day or Monday you know, the lunar day or lunatic day, which would be the you know, lunes in Espanol, right? Which would be connected to the moon, moon day, which is the day of Oset and Neptet. And then on Tuesday, which is a tears day, then, you know, connected to Mars and the God of War, we would refer that to Herukuti. And so Woden's day or Wednesday, we would then get into uh, Impu Poit Sebek dealing with that opening of the way energy that being midweek and then you get into Thursday or Thursday, which is connected to a Juti because of the Jupiter connection in terms of Thursday. And then you get to Friday or Frigga's day, which is connected to Venus and connected to, so then uh, Bast, Hetzeru and Sechmet and then you'd have a Saturday or Saturn's day, which was then also connected to Ptas Kev and Asar, the Ptas Kev Asar. So each of those days has a particular, uh, we call it like aromatherapy, or we would call it. So this is how you use the multi modes to tap into the energies that around. So because the Kamites were very big on cleanliness very big on clearing the spaces that we utilize for energetic transformation. We use frankincense as a way to establish boundaries, 
as a way to cleanse. And there's all kind of research out now talking about what it does to augment and to provide Western documentation for what our ancestors knew millennia ago. So you cleanse with the frankincense, which is associated with Heru. And then you have the basic chant, which is, you know, Nejarak Heru, Anuk Datir Anath Heru, Anuk Heru, which basically means I give praise and honor to Heru, I'm the power of Heru, I'm Heru. Real simple chant, but it means that I am the Avenger. So when you really talk to first Avenger, it's not Captain America. The real first Avenger is Heru, avenging the death of his father. So we can now begin to see that when you deal with these multi modes of health, they also connect to the cosmology and the spirituality of a people. So that whatever group that you're with in terms of your cultural orientation and frame through which you see the world, your stories are an insurance model that aid you in one, understanding your relationship to the earth, to each other and the planet. And I'm sharing that because I'm talking a little bit more about Kemet in ways that most folks haven't heard directly. And hopefully you'll be able to gather something from this. But if you have you know, a question, pop it on up in there and we'll be sure to answer it so folks have access, all right? So if you're catching this on the Facebook feed, hold up and we'll get there once we finish up. Throw the questions in, I'll answer in the post discussion. If you're on Instagram and you got a question and what we're talking about, just drop it in. So, so far, what we've gone over is you got to have more than one thing that you're doing. The other thing that I would say is useful is what is called now is astrology. Okay. And in Western astrology, you got a lot of astrologers out there who are putting in, you know, heck of work. So for us, you know, I like uh, Word Life Astrology with Sonia Marie available on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. Awesome, awesome astrologer. And there's a sister called Kataria Nose. Awesome, also. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So those are another way of seeing or accessing the hidden realms and that provide guidance during times when you may have not, you may be a little unclear. And we refer to them not as astrology, I mean the study of the stars, which was a distinction from astronomy. One of the things that hopefully you've heard me say continually is that in Kemet, science and spirituality or so-called religion, the practices were not separated. They were one practice. So that if you understood, let's say the precession of the equinoxes, or if you were working on the calendar and the farmers knew how the calendars worked because they were connected to the planting and the food. But that was also connected to the cosmology. That was also connected to the movement of the planets and the movement of the moon and where the stars were so that we understood our role and our place. And so now most people can't even tell you where north is or most importantly, where south is. You know, we might be able to know where east is or where west is because that's where the sun rises and sets respectively. But during the day, folks, if it's, you know, if it's just moving already, folks wouldn't know how to find their directions. But that would never happen in the ancient world because it was easy. You know you had landmarks. We have landmarks now, but again, you need multiple modes. Where does your water come from, folks? Where does your food come from? How well do you know the folks that grow your food or where you get your food from? I have intimate relationships with the people I've got food from for the last 30 years. I'm grateful to have the privilege to be able to do that. And I would entreat you to, to the best of your ability, go that route or find a way. And each of us has at least a shelf, at least a window where we could grow something ourselves and we don't have to depend on the system to provide for us. I entreat you to do that. Wherever you are hearing this, there are groups of people dedicating themselves to helping you get what you need in terms of understanding of how to grow plants where you are. And they can help you. Reach out. Find them. Importantly is get organized. Get with an organization. 
find a way. And if for whatever reason you can't get with them, support them how you can, okay? Because these times are gonna require us to step outside of our bubbles and to build real relationships, real networks, real partnerships. Other communities have been doing this just for their survival. Many of us are gonna have to step out and learn and remember what that means. So I'm gonna sum up and then open in case folks have any real questions that we can dive into. Well, not real questions, you know, we have any questions. <laughs> so astrology also is one thing you wanna look at in terms of health because it affords you a way to access information that may be most favorable to you. And so with that, I'm gonna go back to the Qigong and to the traditional Chinese medicine meridian theory and go back to the exercise I talked about called opening the chest, which I referenced earlier. So you do open the chest, that is a movement that basically comes here, it extends, you can't really see it, and you extend back, it opens the chest. This is a hinge joint right here. So it needs time to be able to expand and contract regularly so it is, is enabled to handle the pressures that it needs to handle for you. Sometimes you may hear it crack and pop. What you want to be able to do, though, with this opening the chest, ideally, you want to perform this movement facing the sun between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. And why would I say that? It's because that's the time uh, when the heart meridian is active in the body. And so if there's anything, like if you're taking heart meds or you're doing anything, you know, of course, with consultation. But if you look at the traditional remedies that the Camites gave, and you could find them on some of the medical papyri. They talk about it. This medicine is designed to help heal the heart. You're gonna take this uh, hibiscus tea. You're gonna take it at noon on this day between 11 and one, they say noon, but between 11 and one, because that's the time of the heart meridian. And after that, you're gonna say this particular chant, which is connected to activating the heart through a particular vibration in the chant or the song, or the ringing of the timbrel or the sistra creates a particular sound vibration that is healing for the heart. While that's happening, you take this particular plant medicine, they work together synergistically to expand more than what they do by themselves. So what we're seeking to do with sharing these tools to get you towards a more optimal health is so that you don't just think that, well, I eat right, that's enough. I eat right and I work out, that's enough. In this culture with what's happening, they're seeking in every area of people activity to push their dominant narrative, it's dominant now, and they wanna push it. And so we have to find ways utilizing our culture, our cultural practices to insulate us and to inoculate us from the damages and the ravages of this, you know, kind of this, uh, you know, rapacious, vampiristic culture. And so what are the ways that we're using to do that? It can't just be through food. It can't, I'm sorry. I know some of you want to take it easy and see that, but if they know that, and here's where we get to the real of it. If, if your soil isn't organic in most of our soils right now, we haven't had time to properly aerate the soil, to feed the soil what we need to feed it, to provide all the nutrients so that we actually go from soil to hummus or humus in a way that it is so wonderful that it provides all the nutrients that that plant needs to survive. And in order for us to get back there, the planet has to change. I mean, we got air that isn't always breathable. We got water that people are filtering or, or are taking bottled water, right? So if you're drinking bottled water or you have a filter, what are you feeding your plants that you eat? Is this, If it's coming down through the air with that foul air and soil, what are you doing to supplement their breathing and their ability to breathe in nutrients? It's gotta be more than just food, folks. And it's gotta be more than just food and exercise. And that's why you hear me talking about these other things. So then we get to like aromatherapy. 
And we'll come back Sunday as Haru, we got that frankincense. You get that resin, that frankincense going. It relaxes the mind, prepares the mind for meditation, for breathing. Everything that you need is accessible to you. So if you know you practice the chants from your system or the songs from your practice, in addition to the meditation systems, in addition to the breathing practices, the body alignment and movement practices, now you're coming upon what I would call a lifestyle, a way of life, a way of living, a way of approaching the day or the days that afforded, we're afforded on this planet. And so if you have a lifestyle that is life affirming, life sustaining, it's not just one area, is it? It's in how you write, it's in how you engage people, it's in what you study, it's in your wisdom techniques, it's in the ways in which you work to access the divine, the higher powers within you. All of these things are what I mean by the multi modes of optimal health. And we have the opportunities now to go back and to re examine what is it that resonates with us in our heart center as we cultivate the intelligence of the heart. We have the ability to do that. And so I implore you to make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. This has been Sundays with Seba in Pukamut. I am grateful that you all have taken the time to share in, share with, to be with me during this time. What's most important is that you shared the deepest, deepest, most profound part of your sovereignty. You shared your attention and you shared your time with your participation. I'm grateful that you chose this time out of the day to share with me for us together. So I want to say to you, Hatapu, peace to you and yours. Ankh Ujjasane, life, health, and strength to you. Hopefully this brief bit of us discussing this affords you an opportunity to one, want to research more to want to get to actively practice some of the things that we're talking about. And it doesn't have to be with CASA. It could be with Ra Life, Urban School of Self-Defense, Expressing Sanukas Ryu Jiu-Jitsu with Professor Zahalia. It could be with Doshi Healing Arts. It could be going down to Long Beach with SOTAS Integrative Healing Methods with Brother Blackwater, right? It could be taking any woman that you love or care about or support to a midwife. We got to start someplace else. Another world is possible. That should be able to be visible to you now. We have the ability to really transform this world through transforming ourselves and through partnering with other folks whose liberation is caught up in our liberation so that we partner together to work to change this world. The tools that I offer, if you feel a little burnt out, they'll help. Check us out. You see the pinned comment there. These services and this information is provided to you at no direct cost. If you feel that you've got something that you enjoyed or valued, please just make a contribution if you can. If not, I understand these times are difficult for all of us. We are seeking a way to make these conversations and this dialogue sustainable in ways where we can continue to grow and where this type of conversation becomes every day, where we learn our bodies and we know our bodies. We know the plant medicines where we are we know the energy medicine where we are. We know what our role is in the cosmos, what our mission is for being on a planet, and we are aligned with our mission. We'll take the time now to remind you to make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. I am in Pukamut, and I say to you, Ankh Uja Saneb, life, health, and strength. Be well, enjoy the rest of your day, evening, 
morning, afternoon, where you may be joined with me right now or at a future time. I'm grateful for the time we spent together. Peace and I'll see you in two weeks. I will be back in two weeks. I will be working with my family next Sunday at this time, enjoying my family for our monthly, our monthly Zoom because we under voluntary shelter in place. So I'll be with my family. Hopefully you are finding ways to remain engaged with yours. That's it. Peace, peace, family, peace, peace. Thank you all so much for being actively involved and engaged over on Facebook. I will come and answer any question that you have as soon as this recording is done. I am grateful for working with you. Atapu, Ank Uja, Sineb, Amunre, Sutinache, Atunre, Nibanok. Good job.